Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School, where we teach you everything you need to know to create high quality sports designs in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I've got to be completely honest, I'm extremely excited to share this video with you today. There's tons of awesome stuff that I think will fundamentally change the way we do sports design here in the next few years coming out of this kind of content, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Let me start off by just saying, so a couple weeks back, Adobe had a conference that they have every single year called Adobe Max. And Adobe Max is where Adobe kind of shows off some of the cool new features that are available in Photoshop. And some of them are kind of like a little bit janky, but there are some seriously cool ones that might just blow your mind. They certainly blew my mind. And so today I'm going to talk about some of those cool features that I think could fundamentally change the way we design stuff in Photoshop. So I'm just going to dive straight into it. Um, but before I get started, make sure you drop a like on this video if you've been enjoying our channel lately. And if you're not subscribed already, which I think like a solid chunk of you aren't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. But let's dive in to the video. So I'm going to start off by just going up to filter and then neural filters. And these are all of the new filters that Adobe released in their update. Now here you'll notice a couple of quick things. There's like skin smoothing and style transfer. But for right now, we're just going to ignore those. The more exciting ones are under the beta filters tab. So I'm going to start off with this first filter. It's called smart portrait. And what Smart Portrait allows you to do is adjust the expression of a person using AI. So for instance, let's look at this guy on the left. He looks like he could be a little bit happier. So we're going to check the happiness thing and I'm going to turn it up to about 24. Now it takes just a few seconds to load, um, but you'll see here the results are really, really cool. So all this process is in the cloud, which means it kind of goes up online into the Adobe servers and then is sent back down to your computer. So here we are. And you can see it turned his face from just like a weird half smile into more of a full smile. Really cool. If we want to do anger, we can do that as well. So we're going to turn that up and wait for this to load. And you can see, for better or for worse, he looks angrier than he did. Now some of these are a little bit sketchy, so for instance, it's still in beta mode, but for the most part, he does look angrier. Now a couple more cool ones to share with you. You can adjust the age of a person. So for instance, if we want him to look older, we can turn it up to Let's just say 22. And this will load. And so you can see it automatically adjusts his facial features to reflect him looking older. Very cool. But we're not done yet. We can go through and adjust the angle that he is looking at. So for instance, if we want him to look over here to the right, I'm going to adjust the slider and you'll see he looks to the right. If I want him to look to the left, we can see his eyes move to the left. So maybe you're going to be working on a project where you need a player or something to be looking in a specific direction. This is going to save you lots of time and give you pretty realistic looking results. I mean, if you just had this photo right here, and you weren't really paying attention, it would look like that's how it actually was photographed. Now there are a few other things. There's hair thickness, which I haven't really played around with so far, but let's just try it out to see what kind of results we get. So you can see, I guess for guys it probably doesn't have that much of an effect. I guess it did get a little bit thicker. I don't really see a need for that for most people. Maybe if you're balding or something, that would be beneficial to you. You can change the head direction. This one's really cool. So for instance, if we want him to look over to the right, 
we have the ability to just choose on our slider. And before you know it, his face literally turns. So the original, and then, like I said, here's his head turned. Just like that. I mean, that's crazy. That is literally insane. And if you want to turn his head in the other direction, that might have been too much. Let's turn it down to 30. I will say with the head direction turns that I've noticed so far, the more turn that you try to do, the, the weirder it looks. But if you do just something kind of slight, it looks really great. Like the results are really impressive. So there he is, turned his head more to the other side. Let's bring it back. We can also change the light direction of this photo. So for instance, you can see the light is kind of coming in over on this right side. But let's just see what happens if we turn this slider up just a bit. So you'll see our portrait the lighting in our scene shifts to where this side is more lit and there are more shadows on that side. And if we switch it back to the other side, the shadows on his face quite literally flip just by toggling the slider. And you can play around with it as much as you want to, but those are some of the cool portrait features in Photoshop. I could seriously see using so many of these when it comes to like using player things where you need a specific face or you need a specific lighting scenario and you can just go straight in and use these built-in features. But we're not done yet. Here's this wonderful photo I pulled off of unsplash.com of this black and white grandmother. And we're going to use more of these filters to transform the way this image appears. So like I said, there are these skin smoothing and style transfer effects, but we're going to use something a little bit cooler. There's this function called colorize. And what colorize do, as you can see, colorize can do, as you can see, is it literally adds color back into photos. So I'm going to turn that on. And just like that, we add the greens back into our background and the skin tones back into this old woman's face. Now there are tons of awesome filters that are coming out very soon. So like super zoom where it increases the resolution of your image so it doesn't look pixelated when you zoom it up. There are the removing the JPEG artifacts. There's photo restoration. So for instance, if you have any old photos and you need to get rid of your like dust or things like that. Dust and scratches you can remove in Photoshop. Noise reduction if you have a really grainy photo. Face cleanup so if you have glasses on a person you can remove the glasses. Photo sketch turning your photos into sketches. Sketch to portrait which if you have a sketch of someone which that in itself is really cool it will turn it into an image of a person. Pencil artwork. So imagine taking a photo and with just a simple click, you can create beautiful artwork from that photo and even caricatures. All of these things are going to be awesome for sports design here in the future. But we're not done yet. There's one more effect that I think will save so much time and add really nice detail to our images. And it's sky replacement. So in the past, if you wanted to replace the sky of an image, you have to go through and cut out your foreground or try to use an eraser tool to erase the sky or, I mean, whatever it was, the results weren't that impressive. It was really hard and it took a decent amount of time to do. We can simply go up to edit and then down to sky replacement and you'll see Photoshop works magic and replaces our sky for us. Now we have some awesome tools. For instance, we can choose which sky we want to replace with. So for instance, if we want some clouds or some different clouds 
and you can play around with all of the different options. Maybe a cool sunset. Maybe this sunset. Maybe a rainbow. Whatever it may be. And you can play around with the brightness and temperature and scale. So think about when you're designing something and you have like a, either if you're working with a photo and you wanna make the sky look really awesome or if you're taking a photo and putting it into a new background and you just wanna add like a cool detailed looking sky instead of just like a solid blue sky, sky replacement is gonna save you a lot of time. And you can see it did that by just creating a mask around our mountains. So those are the awesome features that I took away from Adobe Max. And I'm sure there's going to be lots more that will come out here in the next few weeks. Stay tuned to our channel for more of those updates. I'll be sure to keep you guys in tune with what's going on with these Adobe Photoshop updates. And the best way to do that is to subscribe to our channel if you aren't already. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos about the awesome cool things that you can do in Photoshop, make sure you drop a like on this video. And other than that guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.